why I love Serbia and the Serbian passport so much. I think Serbia is one of those countries where you as a wealthy expat should be looking at for more freedom, for a plan B, especially if you're from the European Union, because Serbia is obviously right next to the European Union, but not part of the EU, and it's probably not going to be part in the next decade. The Serbian passport also gives you access to both East and west of the world, having access to the Schengen area while also having access to Russia and China, and good countries in Latin America, as well as some countries in Asia. Overall, a very underrated country. People think it's this very poor communist place, but it's actually a very capitalistic place. You have low taxes, you have ways of reducing your tax rate significantly, you have great people, great English speaking, some of the best people that you can hire. My team is full of Serbians. The first person that you talk to, Jovana, she's Serbian. So definitely somewhere where we benefited in hiring people has been Serbia, Belgrade specifically. If you want to invest in Serbia, we have many different events coming up, like the Expo Serbia in 2027, many different events coming to Belgrade specifically, and a lot of foreign investment, a lot of US citizens, a lot of Americans, Canadians, Europeans are investing in Serbia, specifically in areas like Belgrade Waterfront, where a lot of Arabs are investing. And overall, it's growing the economy, the country, and specifically the capital. The passport, I see it getting better and better with time. Serbia keeps a balance between their neighbors and other regions of the world, and also their regional disputes. Because when the United States told the president to push troops away from Kosovo, he pushed them away from Kosovo just to appease the United States, to appease Europe, to appease the West, because he knows he has to keep that balance. And that's overall the Serbian culture. Balance, tradition, you'll find some of the best women you'll ever see, extremely beautiful women, and they want a traditional life. People buy land, they build a family, they have that culture a building a big family that we're losing in the West. Women are not feministic. They don't want to take your job. They don't want to take your business. They don't want to build a massive business. They want to take care of their man. Yes, there is a certain European aspect to Serbia, but it still maintains its traditional values. And not just Belgrade, but Serbia in general is one of the best investment opportunities in the world. For example, this home that we stayed in in the countryside, you can buy a home like this for around 50 to 60,000 euros. And then you could rent it out on Airbnb, or on the local websites for around 300 euros per night. So essentially you're making around eight to 9,000 euros per month on a property that costs you 60,000 euros to build, including the land and everything that you have to put into the property. You have countryside that is absolutely stunning, beautiful. You don't have the beach, but you also have Montenegro, which has amazing relationships with Serbia. You can enter Montenegro with a Serbian ID. They don't really care how much time you go and spend in Montenegro. You're probably not gonna become a Montenegrin citizen, but you can spend as much time as you want in the beautiful beach towns of Montenegro. You can also buy property in Montenegro, get residency, whatever you want as a Serbian. Overall, one of those countries that people don't look at, that people don't think about on their portfolio, they always look at the headline programs, the golden visas, the citizenship by investment. But in my personal experience, I personally, my company, my team, overall, my life in general has benefited from Serbia immensely. Adding to all of that, obviously, Serbia is still a developing economy, a developing country. So, for example, when you order a taxi, don't expect a Lexus or a Mercedes like you would get in Dubai. Expect a very old Toyota or a car that's almost breaking down. That's unfortunate in Serbia, but it is improving. It is getting better. It's getting a lot of investments and it's growing the economy over time. So in five to 10 years, I'm not surprised if we see Serbia as one of the top places places to live in the world, top places to invest. They roll out a golden visa. They roll out some permanent residency program or something to attract even more wealthy investors because now they're trying to attract people. They're trying to attract investors, but on the down low, they're not really advertising it too much. So I think it's a perfect moment before it gets too popular, before too many people start investing in Serbia to invest right now. Now, when it comes to Serbia and the European Union, will they ever join? Do people want to join? Serbians in general do not want to be part of the European Union. It's surprising because they have European borders. They're also a candidate to join the European Union, but at a local level, people don't want to be tied to EU laws, to EU regulations. Just like Hungary, for example, the government is constantly fighting with the EU for their minimum tax laws, for the laws about immigration. They're constantly fighting with the EU committees and the MEPs. Serbia doesn't want the same faith as Hungary. They're fine with being on the border of the EU, but not as a member of the EU. So I personally, as a Serbian, I don't see them joining any time in the future. If you're interested in expanding your portfolio and knowing what countries around the world to invest in, to put your money, to get residency and check out this video right here which includes serbia the top 10 countries where my clients are going to to invest get residency get citizenship check it out right here